Hello, welcome to Vicky Makes and Builds. Uh, this is kind of a very quick pre-introduction uh, to this video. Uh, I've filmed a proper introduction, but um, I just wanted to come on uh, before that and give you a uh, an update on um, what's happening at the moment. Um, so basically, I am in the middle of packing to move house. It's either going to be at the end of December or at the beginning of January. Um, so it was really just to say, um, please bear with me if sometimes I'm moving rooms to do filming or I'm doing sort of more selfie style filming like this, uh, rather than having to keep setting up the tripod all the time. Because as you can imagine, I've got boxes everywhere and it's all a little bit chaotic at the moment. So I am going to try and keep getting the videos out. There may be the occasional week where I can't um, and it was just really to politely ask for you to bear with me I will keep trying to get the content out I'm still doing puzzles and everything uh, but it's all going to be a bit chaotic until I'm sort of settled in a new place so um, uh, yeah so that was really it also to mention uh, this video was going to be um, two puzzles in one video but I've decided to do it slightly differently and um, release the the videos like one at a time so this is kind of part one of a two-part uh puzzle video where i'm doing two puzzles and um so this is part one um i will mention the other puzzle as well i'll kind of lay it all out for you what i'm planning to do but uh yeah it's just to kind of make you aware of that as well that i've decided to make this a two-parter so this is part one and uh here is me again um introducing today's video for you so thank you for listening and i hope you enjoy hi welcome to vicky makes and builds right my video for you this week is um two puzzles Two puzzles I've got for you, uh, both 1,000 pieces each, and I'm calling this video A Tale of Two Celestials. <laughs> uh, right, so the first puzzle I I'm going to do for you is called the Celestial Planisphere. This is it here. Uh, now, this is quite an old puzzle. I think it was late 1980s. And the reason I am doing this puzzle is because... Um, it is a puzzle I did as a child um, that I really, really, really enjoyed. And for a long time, it was my favourite puzzle. Probably is still up there, but I've done a lot of puzzles since then and I have a lot of favourites now. But anyway, this was one of my favourites. I always really, really enjoyed doing it. As a kid, I particularly liked the glow-in-the-dark element. It glows in the dark. Uh, there's like a kind of a, I don't know if you can tell from the, the box picture, but there's kind of like a, a nebula here, like a cluster of stars, and they've put kind of special uh, glow-in-the-dark um, material on there to, to make it glow. So um, it's a really fun puzzle and I love doing it and it's been a long time since I have done it but I looked around for this puzzle uh, for a while and you can still get it new um, but it's, it's relatively expensive and so I found a bundle on uh, eBay, a bundle of puzzles and this was among the puzzles and um, I bought the bundle. The only thing that I wasn't sure about was um, if all the pieces were there. So it's a used puzzle and um, it said in the listing that I don't know if all the pieces are there on all the puzzles. And I did one of the puzzles out of the bundle and that had one piece missing um and so i was i'm i'm <laughs> so i'm a little bit worried about this one i really really hope there are no pieces missing but i'm really excited to get started on it and um and show you the celestial planisphere puzzle and the second celestial puzzle that i will be tackling and is called celestial and it's by cloudberries now, the reason I'm doing this one is because I know that there are other Celestial Planisphere puzzles. I think Ravensburger do one, um, but I really, really, really like Cloudberry's puzzles. I have totally got completely into them and I got this puzzle fairly recently as a birthday gift and um, I chose it because I was just browsing on the Cloudberry's website and I saw it and I'd already bought the Celestial Planisphere puzzle and I thought, oh, That'll be a nice one to do alongside the Celestial Planisphere because they're quite different. They're both Celestial Maps, but this one, as you can see, isn't black with lots of kind of shiny white stars and, and constellations on it. This one is mostly kind of this cream colour, um, but the thing I like about it is that it's got the 
it's got kind of more detail on the constellations and um, splashes of like red and colour and um, it's just it just has a lot of features kind of um, in its own right that I really like and I would love to just do both these puzzles and just um, see see how difficult they both are in comparison to each other and um, you know look at the kind of the details on the puzzles at the end and um, just yeah I just enjoy two lovely puzzles both celestial maps and both uh, puzzles that I well one by a company I really like and one uh, with a puzzle that I really like that I used to do as a kid so this is going to be a fun one um, so yeah so I think we should just uh, get started and we'll get building the celestial planosphere I hope you enjoy I shall see you after So I'll just very quickly go through these piles with you. This one is a pile of um, pieces with either writing or lists on them here. And then here we have quite a large pile of pieces. These are all the pieces that make up the edges of the two uh, circles. So these big borders surrounding all the star constellations that have the months of the year, uh, that is what these pieces are here, and there's quite a few of those. Uh, then we have pieces with um, things like galaxies and solar systems on. So again, these are these things around the edge where you've got the solar system there and this galaxy there. Uh, so those pieces are all those kind of little uh, details around the edge of the puzzle. This is a small pile of pieces. These are the only pieces I could find that were just that just were black. There was no detail on them at all. And actually, at first glance, this puzzle does look like it's a very dark puzzle, but there's actually not many spots where it is just black. So I suspect those puzzle pieces will go here and here, just in the really small gaps. Might be one or two here where there isn't any detail at all. But as I say, it's not many sections like that. So that's quite a small pile. This is the edge pieces, which I am still <laughs> undecided about whether to do first or not. Um, some of the edge pieces do have detail on like this and that, but a lot of them are, again, um, just pure black like that. Uh, but they do look to be enough of a variety of shape in them to be able to put it together. Uh, so I think I probably will have a go at it first, but I'm not fully quite decided yet. And this one is the biggest pile. This is all of the constellations, everything that sits inside these two uh, celestial maps. Uh, with all the constellations in. That will more than likely get a further sort when I come to do it, uh, because there's, as I say, quite a lot of pieces. It's the biggest pile, but I can differentiate further using these green lines that go kind of across the middle and also these yellow dotted lines. So I could, I could sort that further if I wanted to make that section easier. Again, this bit here that goes across this kind of nebula, this sort of cluster uh, of stars, that I believe is the bit that glows in the dark or one of the bits that glows in the dark. And the pieces for that are very distinctive because they have like a rough um, texture to them. I'll see if I can find one. There's one there. So these light bits, they feel sort of rough. Um, so, I mean, I could even sort using that as a category for that as well, but I haven't done that at this stage. I just wanted to get the initial sort done because this is the section that I'm going to tackle last anyway. Um, and I don't feel too overwhelmed by the size of the pile because it's, it's a thousand piece puzzle. So it's not, you know, 
it's not a humongous thing where I have to wade through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pieces. Uh, so yeah, so just very quick plan moving forward. Going to start with the edge, I think. I think I've pretty much decided I am going to start with the edge. Then I'm going to do... Hmm, might do the lists and the wee galaxy solar system bits. Then I'll do the outside edges. And then once that's done, that's kind of like the border of the puzzle done. Um, so I could probably at that point slot these black pieces in. And then lastly, I will tackle this pile here, the uh, all the star constellations. So yeah, nice and quick. Looking forward to getting started. Okay, so um, I've kind of done a lot of the uh, categories of sorted piles um, and as you can see, I um, I sort of did start with the edge and then didn't. <laughs> uh, I was a little bit undecided on that, to be honest, and um, that's kind of reflected in the way I've built this because as you can see, I've only really put in the edges uh, that have any kind of detailing on them, so writing, or like the edges of the of the circles, um, or you know anything with like bits of kind of galaxy or something like that on them. I just found that they're the other edges, and as you can see, all the rest are just black pieces, and I kind of started to put them together. Um, and you know, there's some variety in the shape and things, but. This puzzle, the pieces are fairly thin. I'll show you on an edge piece. Um, pieces are fairly thin. And as a result, they're quite loose fitting. So it's a little bit um, deceptive as to whether or not the piece goes there because it doesn't quite have that kind of lock-in uh, feel to it where you sort of know that it's right um, because it's just a little bit on the loose side. So, I mean, even the pieces that you know go together fairly well are just a little bit wobbly once they're in place. So I kind of just thought, right, I'm not going to just sit here trying to do the edge first if there's no real reason to. I'm, I'm, I'll give it a go, but I, it just it wasn't really coming together as quickly as I'd sort of hoped. So I thought, right, I'm just going to leave the edge do the bits I know, and then fill in the rest. And this is the result. So as you can see, I've got most of the outside done, aside from the the solid black pieces, which I've got here. And um, most, you know, some of the edge done. But I've also started to fill in some of the circles where you've got the month of the year. This is a really great way to kind of navigate myself around the, this puzzle because I've been able to kind of put together the individual months and then sort of slot them into the wider puzzle. So it is starting to form a frame. And what I'm going to do now is sort of finish that frame off, because at the minute the circles are a little bit squished. They're not really joined together yet. So I'm going to finish that off. I've picked out a few there and there, and all the others are in this box here. And there's not too many of them. So I'm going to get those done. And then once it's kind of in one piece, so to speak, I can then hopefully um, more easily fit these pieces in and then the edge pieces. And then really it's a case of putting together the 
the circles, uh, all the constellations in the middle. So, and they are over there in that box. And there's quite a few more of them, as you can see. So yeah, so just finishing off the smaller piles, going to finish off the, the circles, the edges of the circles with the months of the year on. And then I'm going to uh, try and get the black pieces finished. They should fit in quite nicely because you've got like the odd one there. Slightly bigger gap there where I could fit them in. But once these bits are sort of linked up, I'll have a better idea of how many pieces are supposed to go in there. And then once they're in, I can then start to put the edge in. So um, yeah, just continuing on with the edges of the circles. So I finished all the pieces that I had separated that were the borders of these circles. And I kind of did that in layers. So obviously I began with the months of the year, the very outer kind of lines of the circle. And then I began to look for pieces where you had this kind of inner line. And then... Um, I sort of started to look for pieces that didn't necessarily have the lines on, but maybe had a little bit of the green on, or even all around the edge, if you look closely, there's these uh, Roman numerals. And there were one or two pieces uh, where I didn't have any lines on, I just had the, you know, the Roman numerals. So I knew it was going to kind of go along the edge somewhere. So I've sort of kind of worked my way in from the edges, just using these kind of lines and layers uh, to sort of guide me. Um, and one of the things that also helped with this was this um, a yellow dotted line here, that kind of traces an arc all the way around and it joins at the top there. And there's one on the other side as well. So um, there were times as well when I would find a piece, I wasn't necessarily sure where in the circle it went, but then if I saw the, the kind of the yellow dotted line, then that helped me as well. So um, these are things I'm going to be looking for in the box there. In fact, I've just seen uh, piece here. Look, that's got the yellow line. So that's going to help when it comes to doing that. And also these pieces with the green straight line, they go, if you look there, all the way down from top uh, to bottom there, there's the other one. And I think there's one that goes across the middle as well. You can just see it there, but I don't think that one has little segments sticking out of it like that one does. So anyway, these are wee details I'll look out for in this box of pieces when I come to kind of do like a second sort on these and fill out these circles. Once I'd done the edges of the circles, I filled out all the black pieces I could, but there are obviously some uh, that have uh, details on that I have either missorted and thrown in there or are potentially missing. Um, as I say, this is a used puzzle and I do not know yet whether or not there are pieces missing in the puzzle. I sincerely, sincerely hope not. But anyway, it is entirely possible that I have missorted as well and just thrown them in that box. So um, I'm not going to panic too much just yet, but... Um, the black pieces went in okay once I had kind of filled out the rest. It wasn't too difficult once I'd filled out the rest. So quite a few of them were up here um, and a few of them up here. And then there were just like the odd one or two down here. Um, but it was a lot easier doing it after I'd already filled out the rest because I was really just filling in little gaps and it wasn't too big of a problem. But I think it might have been difficult if I'd have been doing it, you know, without the pieces surrounding it. Because as I say, the pieces in this puzzle are quite loose. And with it being used, I don't know how many times this puzzle has been built before. So, you know, I don't know if it's uh, just, you know, been done a lot of times and that's made it kind of a loose fit or if it 
sort of started out life that way. But uh, that is one thing that makes the solid colour pieces a bit more difficult because they don't have that confident kind of click in place that you would want, you know, for reassurance that it was the correct piece in the correct place. Okay, well, that's a relief. I have all the edge pieces. Uh, and the only bits missing from these edge bits have enough detail on them for me to think that I have accidentally thrown them in here. If it was like a bit like that that was missing, I would be worried because that's very obviously writing and I don't think I would have chucked that in there. There is some writing on that, but there's also some lines, dots and things. So again, I may well have thrown that in there. So I'm really hoping <laughs> that these missing pieces are in there uh, and that one at the top. But I have all the edge pieces, so I'm, I'm remaining hopeful. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through all of these and I'm going to take out ones with this yellow dotted line and put those together and I'm also going to take out ones with the green line that looks kind of like a ruler and put those together and I am going to start doing that now and putting those together and hopefully fingers crossed this will fill in pretty quickly Okay, so I went through all the pieces, as you just just saw, and I separated them out. But before I talk you through those, I would just like to uh, tell you that I found all of the missing bits around the edge. So I'm going to put those in right now. Look like two big eyeballs. <laughs> kind of. Uh, right. So just very briefly to go through. Um, first of all, I'll do this little pile here. I separated out these pieces because they have some of the um, border of the, the circles on them just there. So you can see the little green dotted line, which is this line here. And also, um, there were some that I spotted with the Roman numerals on. So I know they go somewhere around the edges, the inside edges of the circle. See these Roman numerals here? Uh, so I've separated those. It's just a tiny little pile. These are the ones with the yellow dots um, that I've separated out. Now, there are some of those in both circles, but I just kind of put those on that side and these ones over here just for kind of ease of sorting now i've actually these ones are all green line pieces but i've separated them out further because these ones have little markers on them kind of like a ruler like little measurements these ones are just solid green lines and i've separated those out because i think the solid green lines go um sort of on the radius of the circle um, and look, there's like a solid green line there as well. But then this line up here has the markers. That's a solid green line. In fact, I'm just going to pull up the picture uh, so I can double check this because I'm not certain. Yeah. Oh, OK. So, yeah, so it looks like the lines with the markers are only just the top kind of radius of the circle going from the centre and upwards to the top. And it's the same on this side. And literally all the other lines that go out to the left, right and then down, they're all solid green. So that makes sense because that pile is quite a lot smaller than that pile. So I'm glad I've separated those because I now know that these pieces will go at the top edge of the circles and these will go around the bottom 
and the sides. So I'm going to get on with them just now. There's still a bunch more in the box, but I think once I have put these pieces in, it'll really kind of segment out these circles um, and create little frames. And I can just hopefully fill in the gaps. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it'll come together pretty quickly from there on out. But I'm so glad I found these missing edge pieces. So it's starting to look like a whole puzzle now. Um, and as I say, these... Uh, these big white circles here, they look a little like, if I, put, if I move those out of the way. And uh, just kind of cluster those there and cluster those there. There you go. Look like a pair of eyeballs. <laughs> oh dear. I know, I'm daft. <laughs> Okay, so these circles are now starting to fill out a little bit. I have done all the pieces with the yellow dots uh, here and here. And I've done all the pieces with the green uh, dotted lines, not dotted, like the ruler markings and the solid green lines. I used a, a little trick to help me with this um, because I didn't know, obviously, I just had a pile of pieces with green lines on, but I didn't know obviously which of the pieces went on th in this circle and which went in this circle. But using these pieces that I'd already put in at the edge, I kind of separated the pieces according to where in the piece the line falls. So this line roughly goes along the middle of the piece. So I knew that that would more than likely be on the right side. Um, but this line is oriented kind of at the top of the piece. So um, I tended, the ones I found like that, I tended to pop on this side. Again, coming down, this one on the left side goes down the middle of the piece. And this one is more just kind of to the left of the piece. So I was able to um, differentiate a little bit uh, using that. Um, method and that made it a little bit quicker so now i don't really have any other kind of differentiating factors no no really really obvious ones uh with the rest of the pieces aside from these ones here which i've just separated from the rest of the pile these are ones with a lot of this kind of um rough uh i don't know what you'd call it whatever the glow-in-the-dark adhesive is that they use. Um, these pieces are ones with that I could find with the most of that on. Like that one there, that one's got quite a lot on. Um, the uh, the glow-in-the-dark pieces tends to kind of go across it in sort of like a wave, um, more or less in the middle. So I will probably try and work my way out from these kind of areas. Um and fit those in first. I've sorted by shape as well. Um, and then once that's done, I have these pieces to put in. And I think with these, I'm just going to need to, um, again, sort by shape and just get them in. Um, again, things that have helped uh, with this puzzle have been things like uh, this kind of piece here, and this kind of piece here, they, I haven't seen one yet of either of these pieces that goes sideways in the puzzle. They all seem to go either upright or upside down like that. Um, so like, for example, here you can see there's one. And again, it's they're all oriented that way. There's There are none that are kind of flipped on their side. So again, that's something that helps. Uh, with the puzzle. I think the same goes for this kind of shaped piece here as well. They either point down or they point up, but they don't kind of tend to go sideways. Um, and also with your standard pieces, um, you've got sort of tall, narrowish ones. Uh, 
with the two outs you know going up and down and you've got the sort of the long thin ones with the two outs going out the way so again sometimes you get one like this that's oriented that way but mostly they tend to be oriented the way that I've put them in this box so just a couple of little you know tools in my arsenal to try and get the puzzle done uh, without it being too much of a challenge so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to tackle these pieces here and then I will uh, turn my attention to these pieces and sort by shape and just fill in these white gaps which now have a big cross running through them <laughs> so there we go on we go So all the other pieces are in and I have a piece left that is the exact same shape but it just does not look right to me. So you see, uh, I've lost it now, there. So this blue line here should line up with these concentric blue lines. All the other pieces have lined up. There is not another bit of the puzzle where it doesn't line up. So. In theory, I'm looking for another piece elsewhere in the puzzle that's the same shape as this, and I need to swap it around. This could take a little while. I'm just going to check the box. And just make sure there's not something anomaly in the picture that I am missing. So it's where that kind of leaf thing is. And there's like a... I don't know, a jellyfish or something above it? No. No, that is not right. So, um, okay. Time for me to start looking and see if I can find it. Okay. Uh, well, you won't know how long that took, but I could tell you it took me like three seconds. I found it. There it is. In the wrong place, didn't even notice. I had to get right up close though. Uh, so let's put that one where it belongs. Much better. Thank you very much. And let's put you where you belong. And it's done. And there are no pieces missing, yes! Oh, thank God, I was so afraid there was going to be a piece missing, and there isn't. So this was one of the ones that came out of my used bundle that I bought from eBay that was complete. Thank goodness. And there were a couple in that bundle that weren't. Uh, but this one is, and I'm so pleased because this was the whole reason I bought that bundle. I loved this puzzle as a kid, and it's just brilliant. So now I better show you what it looks like in the dark. it I completed it and I'm so so pleased that I had all of the pieces 
I uh, I was worried about all the way th about that all the way through, um, as you'll probably guess by now. <laughs> um, but they're all there, and I'm so so pleased. So, um, not got a vast amount to say as I uh, draw a close to the video. Only that I enjoyed doing this puzzle as much as I used to when I was a kid. I I just love it. I think it's. It looks so awesome. I mean, it looks good not glowing in the dark, but I mean, then when you turn the light off and you see that glowing, it just looks awesome. And um, I, another thing I like about it is that it looks hard. It looks like a challenging and difficult puzzle, but it's actually, if you employ kind of methods and just do it a, a bit at a time um i would say as a general rule um starting from the outside and working your way in um which is what i did uh, i'd say it actually comes together fairly quickly and fairly easily the hardest bit for me probably was the doing the edge pieces um which is unusual for me but i found i mean they went in pretty easily once i'd done uh kind of the all the galaxies and stuff around the kind of the outside edge. Um, once they were in, then it was just a case of slotting the edge pieces in. But like doing those first it was quite actually quite difficult. Um, probably because they were all black, um, and because as I've said a couple of times in the video, the the pieces were quite uh, loose fitting. They sort of wobbled a bit, so it was hard to know sometimes when you had a piece in the right place. Sorry if this is kind of wobbly filming. I'm doing a bit more selfie footage here. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, so I would say, and I would say that's the only real drawback that I found with this puzzle. The pieces being quite thin and therefore a little bit wobbly when you put them into place. You didn't quite get that sort of reassuring click or firmness that sort of let you know for certain that the, a piece was right. And sometimes it maybe didn't even feel right, even when you could see it was right. Um, so, you know, that was a little bit, um, not so great and also i'm not a huge fan of puzzles that have like a shine on them the pieces on this puzzle are quite shiny however as hard as that makes that to film because you kind of get glare and things off it i do think it sort of suits this puzzle a bit because of the just the nature of it being a glowing puzzle lots of bright sort of white colors against black um it sort of works with this puzzle but also i'm not certain what kind of a surface they need to put on the the glow in the dark adhesive that they use so it's entirely possible that that's kind of purposely done uh to accommodate for the glow in the dark aspect of it but you know these are really minor gripes i loved 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 doing it i would highly recommend it to anyone it's called the celestial planisphere and it's by the great american puzzle factory uh which is something i haven't mentioned yet but i'll put the details about it in the description below if you want to uh, look for it uh, as I say, I got mine from eBay. You can buy it new. It's quite readily available. Um, but, you know, you can also find used copies as well. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, the only information I cannot give you is how long this puzzle took me. As I say, as I said at the beginning, I'm in the middle of packing to move house. And so I have been quite scatterbrained and I completely forgot to take timings for it. So I can't give you timings, unfortunately. But it was a great puzzle really enjoyed it and i hope that you enjoyed the video just before i go i just have one more thing i would like to say and that is a huge huge thank you to everybody that has subscribed to my channel i have i only started this channel in july this year and i have been setting myself subscriber goals as the year has gone along and um, my first goal was uh 100 which I uh, which I achieved and my second goal was 250 and I actually surpassed that and I'm now past 300 subscribers so I could not be more happy with that I'm so so grateful thank you so much to everybody who's subscribed to my channel if you haven't subscribed and you like the videos you like what you see um, please consider subscribing. I've got loads more awesome content planned and uh, ideas for more videos that I want to do. Um, as I said at the beginning, it might be a bit sporadic at the moment while I'm trying to move house, but I will keep the videos up as much as I can. And I've obviously got part two of this video uh, this video series to do as well. I've started that puzzle. In fact, I've almost finished that puzzle, but I just haven't quite finished it yet. It's been a bit slow going at the minute, but I will get that up as well. And I've got um, 
I'd like to do some Christmas puzzles and things as well. So uh, yeah, so please do subscribe if you haven't. Uh, stick a like on the video, comment um, if you have any questions. And again, thank you, thank you so much uh, for all of your support. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.